on January 15, 2020. A 35-year-old local man from Snohomish County, Washington, lands at SeaTac Airport in Seattle. He is traveling from Wuhan, China. He was having a cough. Uh, he had been having fevers at home. He hadn't been eating well. He's 35 years old and otherwise healthy. Totally healthy person. He began developing symptoms the day after he arrived. Four days after returning from Wuhan, the man goes to a walk-in clinic and describes his symptoms and tells them where he has been for about six weeks. A preliminary investigation into a mysterious pneumonia outbreak in Wuhan, China has identified a previously unknown coronavirus. In Seattle, a city known for its cutting-edge medicine and technology, as well as ties to Asia, officials are on alert. And so at that point, the clinic appropriately isolated him. The health district contacted the CDC, who advised testing. Uh, and fortunately, that clinic had the appropriate gear to be able to safely test the patient. He was then advised to go home and quarantine. The clinic sends a nasal swab they'd taken from the man to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta. Within 24 hours, the test comes back positive. The first COVID-19 patient has been confirmed in the United States. He is transported to Providence Regional Medical Center just outside Seattle, where medical staff are ready. So it took us about two hours from the time the CDC called for us to get all our staff personnel, supplies, and the facilities on place to be able to uh, give the uh, EMS folks a green light to come in. You did that in two hours? In two hours. We were ready for it. They were ready. Less than three weeks earlier, Providence Regional Medical Center had conducted an elaborate simulation, pandemic training. Chinese experts reportedly found a new coronavirus. We were aware of what was going on in Wuhan at that point, but it was part of our routine structure already to prepare. We really had a, a go-to plan. We, we had a game plan in place already. We had everyone involved, including the local EMS, so those people that bring the patient from point A to point B, public health officials and other partners we have in the community uh, to drill. Uh, and so we had a variety of scenarios went through. Patient one arrives in what's called an isopod, designed to keep a patient quarantined. This is an isopod. This was the patient number one arrived here in this. He did. It's completely contained, doesn't allow any possibility of infection. So our patient was placed in this by EMS and brought to our hospital and unloaded in his room. We were ready for it. The ambulance service was ready. They knew the right personal protective equipment to wear. It was one of those absolute coordination between the healthcare, local health, state health, and the CDC. It went perfectly. But after a few days at Providence Hospital, patient one's condition begins to deteriorate. He began developing more shortness of breath. And because of that, we got an x-ray, which looked like he had a developing pneumonia. His oxygen levels in his blood were also decreasing. This worries Dr. Diaz, who has been following the dire medical reports out of Wuhan. It appeared based on their data that once patients begin developing pneumonia, that many of them end up in the ICU on a ventilator and die. Patient one is slipping fast, and there is no known treatment. Dr. Diaz had heard about an antiviral drug called remdesivir that some experts thought could potentially help. It would be an experiment, but the patient is willing. At that point, I contacted the FDA and Gilead, the, the manufacturer, to see if they would approve it. So the FDA gave us an approval to try it on a compassionate use basis, knowing that it had not been approved yet and that there were no trials available to base that decision on. We infused it the next day. He was still having very high fevers uh, and still was requiring oxygen the day that we gave it to him. By the next day, his fevers resolved and they stayed gone. He felt much better. He felt like he had started beating the virus. No one knew if the drug had an impact or if the virus was taking its natural course. Here's the thing. You have one data point here. 
one person in the it's, world. Yeah, in the world. It is an anecdote. Uh, and so we were happy that the patient got better. So that part was fantastic for the patient. Uh, we knew that we needed to study this in a formal clinical trial. A few days later, patient one was well enough to be sent home. Patient number one was here is as much as anything a reflection of how ready you were in a way. Correct. I'm sure there were other uh, patients in the country. We were ready to detect it. Patient number one in the United States did everything right. But by then, it was probably already spreading uh, in areas in the United States. Um, and we were just very slow to pick up on it. 